Ready? Holderman put off. Hi. Ferrari. Here. Waldorf. Here. Lacocious. Racky. Sapienza. Here. Peyton. Ballard. Here. Merhall. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, public comment. We have a couple, a couple of items that you wanted to talk about. It'll be one three-minute session. Julie Eister, with regard to the three-minute rule, I was wondering if that's actually written somewhere because tonight there's an ordinance amending procedures for public comment cited as Chapter 2, Article 1, Section 2-29. Um, that currently does not exist, so I don't know how you're amending something that doesn't currently exist. I'm of the opinion that you're creating procedures for public comment and that you may have been limiting it in the back to three minutes, but that there was never any written procedure on that. That's, uh, that's, that's false. There is an ordinance, and I can provide you with that ordinance. Okay. It may not have been codified at this time, but there is an ordinance that was passed uh, so several years ago, actually. As long as it comes to the winner that whatever was passed several years ago does not appear on your website and is not codified currently with your ordinances. Um, with regard to that, um, the proposed uh, ordinance for amending procedures for public comment, I would like to point out that was not contained in tonight's agenda package. Um, therefore, the, the public was not provided notice of what that particular ordinance was going to be. Um, I did reach out to uh, Mr. Bartley today, who did provide me a copy of it, um, and he said that he had just received it this morning. So that concerns me, um, because again, it wasn't contained in the package, and the public doesn't have notice as to what that ordinance says. So how do we come here and comment on something when it's not provided to the public beforehand? However, the copy that I received with regard to the proposed ordinance, um, some issues that I see, number four, allotting time to others. Um, I don't think you necessarily could do that because someone could still work through proxy and power of attorney and delegate their ability to speak to someone else. Additionally, if you have problems with people who have disabilities and they can't speak, how are they going to have somebody come and speak on their behalf if they can't allot their time to someone else? Additionally, number six, saying that public comment is limited to 30 minutes total. That's problematic given the more agenda items you have and the more people you have here to speak, um, limiting it to 30 minutes could be problematic. I know that it says number seven, public comment at the next meeting. So there's a situation where you're limited to 30 minutes and people still need to talk, they can come to the next meeting. Well, that provision, in my opinion, is moronic because if I'm here to talk about an agenda item, okay, and you run out of time for me to speak on it, and then you vote on it, and then I'm just supposed to come to the next meeting and talk about something you've already taken action on? You know, at that point, do we get in the DeLorean with Doc Brown and go back in time and re-vote? No. So that, I think, needs to be addressed. Um, also, with regard to the three-minute time limit, I think the ordinance should clarify between public comment on agenda items and public comment at the end because am I limited to three minutes one in one category or another? Because I can come up here and speak for three minutes on an agenda item, does that bar me from speaking at the end on something completely unrelated or something that's not on the agenda? Um, secondly, with regard to the ordinance um, amending or actually creating procedures for agenda items, again, that proposed ordinance was not contained in the package, so you might have issues with regard to notice. Um, also, when we were here two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, I had asked uh, Cliff Bartley to put on the agenda for the City of Peru's Council meeting, and that was denied by Mayor Harl, presumably, because Mr. Bartley told me he had to talk to him. I came to the Council and said, why am I not on the agenda? And now, tonight, we're establishing procedures for how things are put on the agenda. So, three weeks ago, when I was denied being put on the agenda, with regard to a pretty significant issue, which was the, the City of Peru's Planning and Zoning Commission violating the Open Meetings Act with regard to zoning, um, I wasn't allowed to address that on, as an agenda item. This council was not provided the opportunity to take action on that because it was not an agenda item. So here we are. 
And so back when I asked to be put on the agenda three weeks ago and was denied, at that point there was no procedures. So I want to know on what authority Mayor Harl took it and acted upon the denial of me being put on an agenda. Because at that point in time there was no set procedures and no set rules other than he just didn't want it on the agenda, therefore he didn't put it on there. Which concerns me because either one, he's unilaterally deciding what goes before this committee and this council, or two, he's allowing everyone else to be put on the agenda except me. Which then becomes problematic because I'm a member of the group called the public. And when you try and subdivide the class of people, which would be the public, into two categories, which would be Julie Eister and everyone else, then you might run afoul of the 14th Amendment due process um, clause of the Constitution, and specifically the Equal Protection Clause, which is the clause that doesn't allow for segregation, because you can't take one class of people and then subdivide it based on other characteristics, um, which is what's going on here, I believe, and perhaps ban other people from being, having their items put on agendas in the past. Okay, Ms. Eister, you, you need to finish up, Ms. Eister. You're, you're up here now for seven minutes now. But at this point in time, it appears that there has been a history, at least one situation, where a Mayor Harrell has blocked someone um, from being on the agenda. And in response to that, now we're going to have written policies and procedures. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other public comment on agenda items? No, Your Honor. Okay, presentations, none. We have a motion to receive the minutes and place on file. So moved, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. We have a motion to second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried. Do I have a motion to receive the financial reports in place on file? So moved, Your Honor. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'd like to update the city on the sales tax receipts. Uh, for the month of September, uh, the city had a total of $834,484 as compared to last year was $848,252. So that was down about $13,000 or about 2% for the month of September. One of the things I think uh, that implicates that very small uh, difference is in September uh, through the national economy, car sales were down about 6% from September of 2018 to September of 2017. So I think it was a, a blip on the radar as far as the lowering of sales tax. In any other positive point, the city's up about $460,000 from last year's sales tax. Uh, so going into October, uh, the city's in a very good financial position at this point. Anyone else? All in favor signify by aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Do I have a motion to receive the activity reports in place on file? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Turn it over to committees. Finance Safety Services, Chairman Fada. Alderman Racky, would you lead us through disbursements tonight? Yes, Your Honor. Total disbursements to be paid on December 26, 2018 are $3,056,649.94. I move this report be received, placed on file, the bills paid in the usual manner. Second, Your Honor. I have a motion and a second to receive disbursements, place on file, and pay the bills in the usual manner. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, Your Honor. That number is a little bit higher than what we would normally see. There's uh, a lot of payments in here for some of the infrastructure work that has been completed over the summer, some of the water main work and street resurfacing and that, that which we've done. So there's a lot of those payments that have come due that are, that are in here. And there's also some insurance renewals that are paid at this time uh, prior to the new year fitting. So that would be the reason for those slightly elevated disbursements. <coughs> Anyone else? Have a roll call, quick call roll. Alderman Fedoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Uh, next item, Your Honor, uh, the council has a number of reinvestments of the following funds. I'm going to call on Treasurer Jackson Powell to lead us through those reinvestments and kind of the strategy that goes along with city funds as far as reinvestment is. So, so you all know that uh, we decided to go with a ladder strategy and we've gone short, meaning uh, in my view under five years. Our ladder right now is about three years. So you can see that all the CD investments are under three years. Um, no bank 
gotten over 250,000 on the national market because um, we would have exposure. Uh, the local banks uh, pull collateral for uh, monies over $250,000 for the city. Um, so the Touchmark, First National, um, and the let's see, First Internet Bank and Independent Bank are all FDIC insured. And so those are on the national market and then the local market. We took it to bid and Central Bank came with a great rate, uh, 3.2 for 36 months. And that kind of continues to fill out our ladder of uh, having maturities every month, steady flow. There's no lumpiness in our portfolio. We're slowly smoothing that out over time. Um, so that's what we have right now. Does it have to be? In the Thank you. And again, those are a lot of the reinvestment funds for the city are an obligation of some of the bonds coming down the road and certainly uh, as far as reserve structure for city balances. And uh, thank you again, Jackson, for pointing that out. So there is a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the reinvestment of those following funds. I will second it, Your Honor. I have a motion and a second to approve the reinvestment of the following funds. Is there any discussion? Okay, we'll have a roll call. Clerk, call the roll. Holderman, Fadoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lukosius. Aye. Bradke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to approve a $500 donation to North Central Illinois Artworks. I have a motion to approve $500 donation to North Central Illinois Artworks. Is there any discussion? Well, this is what we used to <coughs> give to the Mott Powell Committee, but as, as we know, the Mott Powell Committee is has decided that they are no longer going to do that. So we wanted to continue to give some money to the arts locally and this goes to the on the arts which is located in the uh, or, sorry, the North Central Illinois Artworks, which is in the West Box building. Anyone else? Okay, we'll have a roll call, quick call roll. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lukosius. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Uh, Your Honor, there's nothing else on the agenda. Later on the agenda, we have very important ordinances abating our tax levies. And again, that's an important uh, thing that we will do. So that's all we have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Public Services, Chairman Waldorf. Yes, sir. Uh, Waldorf, would you please? Sure. Uh, tonight, I'd like to make a motion to approve the necessary repairs to well number eight in the amount of $111,050 to Lane Christensen Company. Uh, Eric and Chris, can you comment on that? Sir? Sure. Uh, as you know, well eight recently, uh, we had some issues with it, so we took it out of service. And um, this, these are the needed repairs for it. This is a standard thing every you know, 10 to 12. Sometimes you can get 15 years out of these things. And you have to take them down, rebuild them, and put them back in again. Um, these wells are very expensive. They're very deep. Um, that's why the cost to rebuild them is so high. I mean, if you were to put something like this in the ground today, you'd be looking at 1.5 million. So, a hundred and some thousand dollars to rebuild something like this is pretty typical. So, and it's both Eric and Mike and I's recommendation to go with what they're recommending. Yeah. And I'd like to add that we do budget for this annually. Yeah. Um, and in addition to that, um, we did exercise a, an option on the contract to replace uh, some of the electrical components while we had the well pulled. Uh, so it made sense to do the, that work all at the same time. Yes, uh, actually that was another 32500 for that wiring for that. And that was recommended by them. And again, it's important to do this because if you wouldn't change that cable out and you would drop it back in the hole again and then the cable goes back in. You got another thirty-seven thousand to pull it out. Seven thousand to put it back in again. So definitely need to do this. Very good. So where, where is Well Eight located? It's at the water she, 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 she didn't have the uh, some amended the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second that motion, Your Honor. Uh, it's drilled to close to uh, three thousand, and the pump is set at like six hundred and fifty feet, I believe. And it pumps close to a thousand gallons per minute. And what's the location of that one? Up at the uh, water plant of Peoria. Okay, anybody else? A roll call, quick call roll. Holman Pot. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to approve 
quote from Chapman's Mechanical Systems Incorporated in the amount of $9,747 for a new HVAC system for the map room at the Public Works building. I'll second that. I have a motion and second to approve $9,747 for a new HVAC system in the map room at the Public Works building. Is there any discussion? What's the map, what's the map room? Yeah. It's a building out of the map room. We're inundated with uh, large maps. They're, they're building out one of the upstairs rooms at the uh, public services building. Um, this seven, this nine thousand seven hundred and forty-seven dollars will come out of the utility fund. Um, and um, if Justin was here, he could give you more on the on the financials. <coughs> here, can you run? Yeah, I can cover for Chief King in his absence um, when we constructed the public works building. Um, we had a plan for a second story uh, build out at some point in the future. Um, so this map room area is a part of that second story build out that wasn't in the original construction. Um, and the area is being utilized uh, much to what it sounds like. Uh, we maintain a number of different plans in the city with new developments, sewer systems, um, water systems and the public works guys update those as they do the maintenance items throughout the year and we We're reference fine. them every time we have an issue. Hmm? So if we have sewer backups, if we have water main breaks, okay. um, that's kind of our central location for uh, pulling plans, updating them and reviewing them for maintenance types. Is it computerized? Uh, partially, so we've, been, um, we've been working on last winter in my department completed uh, mapping of the entire sewer system, which is now on our GIS system. Uh, but that's the only system that we currently have in the computer. Um, the water is still on all hard copy maps, yes. as well as the storm sewer system. So it's a long process to computerize it. Uh, we did spend almost uh, four months last year doing the sanitary sewer system. Um, and the hope is that we'll start the water system next, followed by the storm sewer system, then the electric. Great. Yes. I'm not. We already have the motion and a second. Yeah. So, so, is there any more questions? I have a roll call. Quick roll. Alderman Fudoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Wacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Next, Your Honor, I would like to make a motion to accept a $100,000 donation to the Peru Cemetery from the estate of Anita R. Copeland. <clears throat> uh, it's very magnanimous um, and generous uh, for Mrs. Copeland to uh, give us this donation. Um, she had no surviving family members left and was nice enough to include us. So um, that is a motion. I'll second that. Where was the second from? I have a motion and a second to accept a $100,000 donation to the Peru City Cemetery from the estate of Anita R. Copeland. Is there any discussion? Eric, are we, uh, are we currently looking for a project for that donation? Yes, we are. Um, we're looking um, at an upgrade of the road network within the city cemetery as well as some parking and landscaping uh, around the mausoleum. Excellent, thank you. Anything else? Do we have a roll call? Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Your Honor, on the agenda now, there's a resolution to allow connection of a sanitary sewer service for Route 251 and Shooting Park Road. Do I have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Have a roll call, quick call roll. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to authorize permanent chain link, uh, permanent chain with no parking sign at McKinley Park, as uh, Alderman Waldorf mentioned. This is in response to some uh, neighbor requests. This road uh, is on the west side of the park. Is that where the there's a handicap lot there? Mm -hmm. So you'll still be able to access that lot, but you can't go beyond it. 
it would go just far enough beyond so we can back out of the Henry case. Right. I understand what's going on. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I have a roll call, quick call the roll. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Your Honor, that's all from public services. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Report City Attorney Ordinances Resolutions. Yes, Your Honor. First, I have an ordinance adopting the management and supervision agreement for wastewater treatment plan, waste water treatment plants of the City of Peru with Test Inc. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I have a note from uh, Eric Carls. Eric, if you could just go over some of the comments as far as the contract's concerned. Yes, certainly. Um, everybody received a letter of recommendation from myself. Um, as you know, my time at the city, um, managing and monitoring the city's consulting services, whether it's ranging from engineering, architectural, water, wastewater. Um, this period, I've observed various consultants in the city uh, that we've employed. I've also managed and negotiated those service contracts for the city and made recommendations to the mayor and the council uh, regarding these services. Um, Today, or on December 31st, test contract is scheduled to expire, and I'm rec recommending that the terms of the revised contract uh, be extended for the additional five-year period. Um, one of the most important components of the city is to provide safe drinking water and manage the city's waste by uh, the regulated discharges. Um, test has continued to show a uh, level of expertise and professionalism to manage those very important and vital services of the city. Um, tonight, uh, obviously, we have an action item to renew the contract and outline some of the major changes or the amendments to that contract. Um, the original contract had a table um, for the wastewater limits, and we revised the language to reference our current NPDES permits through the IEPA. So when our NPDES permits are going through that renewal process now, as they're updated, those limits change uh, for the various contaminants. Um, they're ever changing, so um, we definitely want to maintain uh, current with those permits. Um, we've also added in the operation of the splash pad uh, as it relates to the maintenance of the water quality standards uh, set forth by IDPH and the other regulatory agencies of the EPA. Um, we've revised the number of wastewater plants from the original contract. The original contract. Uh, identified that we had one wastewater plant, we now have two. We have the east and the west that they're managing. Um, we've also revised the number of qualified staff uh, to add one more individual uh, requirement. Uh, we were requiring five plus support staff, now we're requiring six full-time plus support staff. And then we've revised the compensation. Um, and one thing I want to stress on this is uh, in the Thankful for a test and, and coming to terms on this. Um, we've revised it to maintain the 2000 rate for the remainder of the next five year term. So there won't be an annual increase on that. Um, we will stay at our bi weekly payment rate of 23,331.63 cents for the remainder of this term. The 2018 rate? 2018 correct. rate, that's correct. So that rate will be in place. Uh, that rate is noted. Uh, in, in the new revised contract to be in place for the full five-year term, so no annual increase. Um, in addition to the services of managing the day-to-day -day operations for water, wastewater, uh, the City of Peru, we also mandated to have a pre-treatment program for our industrial users. Um, it's a very in-depth program. It requires a high level of expertise and technical assistance for our industrial users. Um, test uh, recently completed an audit with the US EPA, uh, which I sat in on many of those meetings as well. Uh, we were very successful in that audit uh, because of test, and uh, we received a lot of good positive feedback from the US EPA through that process. Um, there, one other thing that's uh, kind of an intangible test, they have an office located here in the city of Peru. Uh, many of their employees that work in our facilities are residents of Peru. And just adds an extra level of service to the city. Um, 
the, the level of the local expertise and the <coughs> certifications of each of those individuals uh, within our community is it's not just a value, but it's, it's an asset to the city. Um, you know, I've heard it being a young professional, you know, growing up here my whole life, people say, how do you keep people? Um, honestly, uh, you keep good companies around, like the tests of the world, those consulting services that can employ those types of certified individuals. Um, and then, you know, I've been continually impressed with the service that we received from TEST. Um, my four and a half years, uh, I've learned even more about the water wastewater business than through my traditional schooling and experience uh, with just the expertise of their individuals that are working in our facilities. And uh, I'm favorably recommending that we extend that contract under those revised terms. Thanks, Herb. Any discussion? Well, I mean, I can share a couple of stories that, are, that come to mind. So I remember, I think it was April of 2013, um, we had the flood on the river. I think it was a record flood for the river that year. Um, and there were several of us that were at the East Wastewater Treatment Treatment Plant um, lugging sandbags around. And, um, I remember going home that night, um, taking a shower. All I wanted to do was go to bed. And I, I called Chris the next morning. I said, Chris, how's everything going? He said, well, everything's fine. I said, well, how late were you guys there? He said, well, actually, all the employees that were down there, the tough guys, they slept there. You know, I said, well, what, what, what's that going to cost? You know, where, where, where's, where's the bill? I mean, what, just put it before the finance committee and, and we'll pay it. You know, and he said, oh, no, there, there's, there's no cost. And then I, I remember another story. We had a, a vendor, an uh, uh, industrial manufacturer on the north end of town. They were doing, a, they were doing an expansion. And they, as you, you get, may recall, there was some um, grant funding that we went through, um, whether it was DCEO or how, how, whatever the grant funding was when they in, increased their employment. And they needed some information. And um, <coughs> Chris probably doesn't want anybody to know this, but he was actually on his way to vacation with his family one day. And, uh, they needed some information. The information needed to be at the state. You know, so he turns the car around, comes back, you know, leaves his family, comes back, does all that information gives all the information to our to our industrial um, company in the North End. They had everything they needed on time. You know, I, I don't know where you would get that level of service if you went uh, with another vendor. Um, I know that, you know, I'm a person who's responsible for a large operation and if I had a vendor that, that treated me the way that test treats the city, I mean I would definitely want to protect that relationship. So I have uh, Chris is the president of Test. How many cities do you now service over 100 cities and you're our representative you are mr lori the manager are at every council meeting Not everyone all the time, but, you know, yeah if there's any problems you're there yeah. so oh, yeah. and i i can't imagine there's anything more important than the quality of water uh, from any city and uh, certainly uh, you provide us with that we appreciate it Okay, is there any other discussion? Yeah, Your Honor, I just feel like I'm do a lot for this city, but Chris is one person in this room that does more than I do. Wow. Uh, I, I've got a comment. I, the first time I met Chris and his crew, I was an alderman elect at the time, that was in 2013 when we had the big flood. And I was down there, and I was bumping shoulders with these guys that I didn't know who they were. I didn't have a clue if they worked for the city or if they worked for test or, or what it was. But I saw the way Chris and his crew pitched in on that. And when I got uh, got through the next day, I hobbled up with my sore shoulders and back and uh, did a little checking into who were these guys that were down there slinging these bags right next to us and found out who it was. And so after that, I thought to myself, like Mike mentioned earlier, who's paying these guys all this extra money? Came to find out nobody has. And uh, so I, I started paying a little closer attention to Ted. And uh, I do support what you do. I believe in what you do. You do it for the city of Peru. I don't believe you do it for the money as much as you do for the love of the city. And that means a whole lot to me. Anybody else? Okay, we'll have a roll call. Quick call the roll, please. 
Alderman Fedoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Precocious. Aye. Racky. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Next round, I have the resolution authorizing right away encroachment license agreement between the city of Peru and Sandra Platt, 1425 Cross Street, Peru, Do I have a motion to approve the resolution as written and read? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We'll have a roll call quick by the roll. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Next round, I have an orange amendment procedures for public comment at city meetings. This amends an orange that was passed September 22nd, 2014. So, who, who just gave that motion? Mike. Oh, second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Uh, would you read some of the amended portions of it? Uh, the, the last ordinance set forth uh, two public comment periods, one at the beginning of the meeting, one at the second, uh, at the end of the meeting. The first uh, public comment period was limited to just agenda items, uh, while the second was open to matters of public concern. Uh, this establishes one public comment period uh, at the beginning of the meeting, open to all matters of public concern. Uh, Further, it addresses some of the um, uh, restrictions that were previously in place under the old ordinance um, that under some recent decisions made by the uh, Attorney General uh, Public Access Counselor uh, were found maybe to be uh, potentially at odds with the language of the Open Meetings Act. Um, and so the new ordinance does provide that um, uh, there's 12 enumerated rules. One, any person shall be allowed uh, to speak at any public meeting on any matter of public concern. No person shall be prevented from speaking on the basis of any prior speech. Uh, two, prior to the start of the meeting, anyone desiring to make public comment must sign their name to the public comment sheet, identify the agenda item or topic they would like to offer comment. Additional contact information may be provided but is not required. Speakers will be called to speak upon in the order they appear on the public comment sign-in sheet. Um, each person who wishes to speak uh, will be allowed, allotted no more than three minutes to make public comment unless additional time is authorized by the presiding members or what's consigned the majority of the present council board or committee members. So this does address every public meeting, not just city council meetings. Uh, four, no person may allot his or her time to another speaker to increase a speaker's allotted time. Uh, five, each person offering public comment shall first be acknowledged by the presiding member and shall begin their uh, public comment by stating their name. Six, the total time for public comment shall not exceed 30 minutes at any meeting, uh, which is a reasonable time manner uh, restriction. Seven, in the event the 30 minute time period elapses before all speakers have had an opportunity to be heard, those speakers on the public comment sheet still wishing to be heard shall retain their position on the list for public comment portion at the next meeting. And since this does address all meetings uh, or all comments and topics of public concern, uh, not just things that are being voted on uh, that could arise in a situation where there is a topic, uh, a large topic that's addressed over m multiple meetings. Uh, eight, any person shall be permitted to address the public body or any member of the public body uh, at any time via email or mail, uh, alternative avenues for addressing your public officials. Nine, each member of the public addressing the council shall be expected to conform to conventional standards of decorum and shall refrain from making vulgar, insulting, or inappropriate remarks towards uh, or about any member of the council, any employee, or any officer of the city, or any member of the audience. Ten, each speaker must maintain civility and cannot disrupt an orderly meeting by using obscene or threatening language or just gestures. Any person who poses a threat to public safety will be removed from the meeting. Eleven, the presiding member shall have the authority to direct that speaker suspend his or her remarks for exceeding the prescribed time limit or for any other violation of these rules of order for public comment. Twelve, public comment is not intended to require public officials to provide any answer to the speaker after the speaker has used his or her allotted time. Uh, or finish making their comment here, she shall be seated with no further debate, dialogue, or comments. Any, any questions? Uh, is this uh, obligated to the residents of the city or is that basically anybody? 
anybody can approach the council despite if they're a resident or non-resident of the city of Peru? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, we'll have a roll call, quick call roll. Alderman Petoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Next round, I'll have an order to establish some procedures for presentation of agenda items. And um, just a comment on this one. I'm not aware of any statute or law that requires any procedures um, to be in place for presentation of agenda items. Uh, this does establish procedures for people to add agenda items, including staff members, employees, and members of the public. So it's a, uh, an additional feature that grants greater transparency to the city of Peru. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the ordinance as written in red? So moved, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. Any discussion? Do we have a roll call? Quick call roll. Alderman Putoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Lacocious. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Clerk Bartley, do you have the tax abatement ordinances? I do. Um, Okay, before we go into these one by one, do you know the chairman of the finance want to say anything or the treasurer on, on for the public on what this is and this is to keep it off the tax rolls and yeah, as we uh, had stated very briefly before, uh, typically the city of Peru is in a financial position through our sales tax, our sales of uh, utilities in a good financial positions that the bonds that we have do not go on to the taxpayer rolls. So one of the processes that we have each year is that these general obligation refunding bonds are, uh, what we do is we adopt an ordinance that abates those. And uh, with that abatement, the city approved taxpayers, of course, uh, save a great deal of money because without that abatement, uh, the amount of money that we have currently would probably raise your taxes maybe seven or eight times higher than they currently are. And again, we talked about some of the reserve funds and some of the CDs that we have reinvested. And of course, those are set strategically to pay off bonds in the future. And uh, the city has made a great deal of improvement over that over the course of the last five to 10 years. And uh, relatively speaking, uh, the city has a, a fairly low debt performance or fairly low uh, bonds that are outstanding. We have some still for water plants that we've expanded. We need it for infrastructure. Uh, we have some for the hydro project. Uh, and those are all set to expire in the coming years. Uh, many of you will still be around here. So that is positive from the city of Peru. So there's four ordinances, uh, the first of which is for the series 2011B. Uh, it's a general obligation bond, and it is for three million one hundred five thousand. The second is um, a general obligation bond series of 2017. Uh, the, the third is abating a general obligation bond series 2010, and the fourth is abating uh, general obligation series 2009A. There are four different ordinances that pay all of the debt, bonded debt of the city of Peru. And I will clarify some figures on this because I only gave you the figure on the first one. So uh, the 2011A was 436,800. The 2017 was 490,600. Uh, the uh, Recovery zone bonds uh, were 225,175, and the one that I noted initially, which was the uh, 2009A, was the 379,600. Is it required that each individual ordinance be abated right. with a roll call vote? Right. I, I think we should do that. Okay. So, oh, right, about, about 1.5. Okay, so I'm asking for an ordinance uh, to approve the ordinance as written and right abating 2018 levies for the, 2000. the 2018, the 2011B bond ordinance number 4835. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I have a roll call, quick call roll. Oliver Puttoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Now do we have a motion to abate the, to receive the ordinance as written in red for the abatement of the, uh, the bond series 2017 passed on October 31st, 2016? So moved, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. Any discussion? Call the roll. Alderman Puttoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lacocious. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Do I have a motion to approve the ordinance for the obligation bond series 2010 recovery zone economic development bonds? Do we passed on uh, February 15, 2010? So moved. Second. second. Where did the first second come from? Ferrari. Sapienza. Okay. Is there any discussion on that one? Yeah, I have Alderman Ferrari as the motion, Alderman Lukosius as the second. No discussion? Okay, we'll have a roll call. Call the roll, please. Alderman Puttoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lukosius. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. Do we have the motion to approve the ordinance abating 2018 levy ordinance number 4657 with a general obligation bond series 2009A? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Who was the second? Any discussion? Call the roll. Alderman Puttoff. Aye. Ferrari. Aye. Waldorf. Aye. Lukosius. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sapienza. Aye. Ballard. Aye. Motion approved. And if this isn't done tonight, then the county automatically puts it on the, the tax rolls. Yeah, I'd like to have Clerk Bartley uh, <coughs> give his I guess under oath that all of these bonds have been. <laughs> yeah, we send a certified uh, notification to the county. They're complete. Subject to the approval at tonight's meeting. Thank yes. you. Okay. Proclamations. Do we have any proclamations? Nothing, Your Honor. Unfinished business, anyone? New business, anyone? Yes, Your Honor. Under new business, everyone in here knows we had a major fire in the city of Peru last night at 309 Peru Street. And since this is an emergency situation, I was told we can bring it up on a new business. I'd like to make a motion that we proceed with the city attorney for demolition of this building. I, I don't want to go there yet. I think we need more discussion on that. We go through the proper condemnation procedures. Right. And, and, and we're not the owner of it. I, I think we need more discussion on that rather than to, we're going to need to push the owner into to doing it. That's what I'm saying, and I'm more to let the attorneys handle the situation. We will be handled through the building zoning department. Right. It'll start in the building and zoning. Right. The attorneys will be involved at some point, but we'll start with the with the building and zoning. So how long are we going to let this go? I can't tell you that. <clears throat> Any other new business? Well, I hope that we would treat this kind of similarly to what, how we treated the Water Street when the building in Water Street collapsed. So we should be trying to force the owner. To well, we we did we did down there, and we'll do it over there as well. But as you know, Water Street it still took what six months, seven months. Nothing happens overnight, right. you know, and every everything has to go through the legal process, which Alderman Ferrari just mentioned. But we'll, we'll start with the building. You know, it, I don't know. We we don't know at this time if the owner is is a responsible owner. Do they have Insurance? Do they have money? I don't know. State fire marshal needs to do his work, his or her. I don't know what state fire marshal sex is, so they need to do their work first. But and again, uh, the city would proceed by having the building and zoning. Make sure first of all that the building is wrapped up, safe, and all the exits or exits are blocked off by the owners, and then move to the next step. Well, I, the, there's. Nothing you can do until state fire marshal turns it over. You know, it's tied up right now. There's nothing you can do. So we you have to wait and see what happens there. I don't know what type of investigation they're in. They're in an investigation, but I don't know what type. So we don't know how long that's going to take. But no, we're, it's not going to sit there. Just like I said with Water Street, we, we went after it as diligently as we could, but it still took six or seven months, if not more, eight months. I don't remember what the time frame was. Children in that area that, that, you know, I 
that's understood. The same thing down on Water Street. It's understood, but you have to do things legally. You, you can't just go tear buildings down. They're not yours. They're not yours to tear down. So any other new business? Okay. Hold on for public comment, please. Is there any other new business? Okay, petitions, communications? No, Your Honor. Public comment. Ms. Martin, you have a good point. Please, please rise and state your name and, and say it. You have a very good point. And there are a lot of children in that area, and I'm very concerned. I would hate to have a child get in there and go through the floor or wood and get killed. So that's why I'm asking, is the city going to go ahead and say, okay, regardless of who owns the building, are they going to put a fence up so, uh, around this location so the kids can't get in? To, to, to my knowledge, we can't. There, there will probably be some fencing, yes. But to my knowledge, we can't touch the building until okay, State I Fire Marshal turns it over. But to answer your question, yes, the fire was just put out, what, at 5 this morning, 5 or yes, 6 o'clock this morning. They were there all night long. So, mm -hmm. And you did a good job, but I, I'm more concerned about the children and them getting hurt. Well, there was, there was eight departments involved in that, that fire, and we thank all eight departments. I don't even know what all the names of the departments were that were there last night because our Chief King was there all night long, and I talked to him briefly, but he, he was wore out. So, Public comment? Do we have another public comment? I think uh, we have another public comment. Mr. Geese? What's the comment now? Yes. Thank you. My name's Art Geese. I heard some comments tonight and comments made in favor of the test. I am not qualified to judge tests, but I am qualified to know that we had an initial contract made with test for five years. And then what happens after five years? We've never had another contract. We've had add-ons and add-ons and add-ons. I believe we have about five add-ons that give us 30 years. It was six all total in there. So that would I, be I'm not sure. initial plus five, 30 years. Uh, 30 years without a competitive bid. Tonight, I sat back there and heard comments how good the test is, and I hope they are that good and compliment them if they are. But I heard this from people that have no idea because last time that someone wanted to bid against us and they came to this city council, they were questioned what they were doing here. And they were not recognized at that meeting. And I believe that uh, another ad was awarded that night. So actually, I don't think any of you have been up there long enough to ever see a competitor in the position that test has been in for the last 30 years. And at that point, it makes it awful hard to judge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keese. Thank you. Public comment next. Your hand was up. Um, again, Julie Eister. Um, I wanted to remind the council that I was here earlier this year um, with regard to issues of the city council violating the Open Meetings Act, I think it was two or three times with regard to SWAP, which is the Shared Services without Open City in Peru. Um, and at that point in time, I had cautioned the city council with regard to the repeated violations of the Open Meetings Act. Since that time, there's been subsequent violations with the Planning and Zoning Commission. I'm currently in the process, I'll be filing additional requests with the Attorney General's Office for review. So at this point in time, I would just like to urge the council, <coughs> the aldermen, to do what's best for the citizens of Peru and the businesses of Peru, as well as yourself. Because currently codified as 5 ILCS 120-4 of the Open Meetings Act states, any person violating any provisions of this act, except those portions related to Open Meetings Act training, shall be guilty of a Class C misdemeanor. So, when this council violated Open Meetings Act by going to closed session three times with regard to SWAP, the Attorney General's office says, yep, they violated the Open Meetings Act. At that time, the State's Attorney's office said, 
it's not enough to show a pattern of repeated disregard for Open Meetings Act and provisions of that to charge them criminally. Now we have subsequent violations. And I guarantee there'll probably be future violations. So at this point in time, I'm just putting the council on notice that I'm not going anywhere. Other people in the community are not going anywhere. So if this council continues to violate, in my opinion, the Open Meetings Act, I'm going to continue to send requests to the Attorney General's office. And given the fact that all the ones that I've submitted thus far, I've been um, absolutely correct and the Attorney General has agreed with me, um, at some point in time, if you get enough of those, um, it may not bode well for certain council members that sit on this city council. Um, I don't want to take that, that route. Okay, I believe everybody's here to serve, but I think there may have been a practice, perhaps, that council members rely on certain other individuals um, for advice. And I would just tell you to be very cautious of that, okay? Because ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So if you're following the lead of other people, other council members, and then you violate the law, well, you're just as responsible. So again, I would just caution you that in the future, when you're talking about closed meetings, when I come here and say, don't vote on that, it's a violation of the Open Meetings Act, maybe just listen to what I'm saying or others are saying, um, because at some point in time, if it continues on like this, um, you know, I will go to the state attorney's office. I don't. I just want this council to start following the law and stop violating the Open Meetings Act, um, as well as other provisions of even their own ordinance. Thank you. Any other public comment? Uh, your hand was up first. Kristen McDaniel. I just wanted to really briefly say that as a citizen crew, I'm really disappointed tonight because to add an item to the agenda is taking 15 business days or working days, I'm sorry. I think that is absolutely crazy. So if I wanted to add an item to your agenda today, I would wait through your next meeting all the way for another month. So really disappointed, guys. Next, I saw another hand up somewhere. Mr. Geese, again. Thank you. Yeah, technically, right. Hi. I'm Mark Geese, and again. Uh, tonight, the person was forewarned. They had already taken, well, first that they would have three minutes, then that they would have, that they were up to seven. I don't find that to be very in parallel with the meeting that I sat here for in time. The person that got up here about four or five years ago, and he took up to 15 minutes for a public comment, and not a word was said to him for the entire period of time. Not one word. So you have your rules, and rules are created for probably progress. I haven't really heard too many things that have been passed here tonight that have been progressive. Thank you. Next, I thought I saw Ms. Mazak. <clears throat> I just had a question on the um, the new policy for the, or the new ordinance for public comment. Is the public comment at the end of the meeting being taken away? No. 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 Okay. So yes. Yeah. The ordinance calls for that to be, to be one public comment at the beginning. Okay. So if you want to make a public comment about <coughs> anything, you still can. But you yes. have to do it at the beginning of the meeting. Right. And you have to fill out a card for it? No, just you state your name and and, and if you and I think the uh, guidelines are specific, but it doesn't you don't have to fill out a card, you just put your name on the sheet and um, state your topic. It doesn't have to be a topic on the agenda. So then what if there's something that someone I, there's a there's a lot of uh, I attended two of the um, Open Meetings Act seminars at the IML and um, 
the recommendation of the PAC at the time on the meeting I was in was that you have one public comment, and I think that's consistent with uh, Attorney Schweigert's research to go with one public comment period, not two, and then changes in the Open Meetings Act and rulings of the PAC have identified that the timeline is reasonable and the 30 minutes are reasonable and the uh, opening up the topics to any topic is reasonable. So if you wanted to speak about something that happened in the meeting, you'd have to wait till the next meeting in two weeks. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Swigert? We should have never took that. Uh, Dr. Schweigert. I would just like to address uh, Art's comments. Uh, I've been around for 41 years. And when I began, the uh, city used to manage its own water and wastewater plants. Actually, no plants, but by a uh, uh, civil engineer, professional engineer. Uh, it's now deceased. But we had all kinds of problems. We had all kinds of unanswered EPA notices. And the like. And that's why the city went independent contractor at that time. And the first one, I believe, was uh, Serco. After Serco, then it became uh, Water Environmental Technologies. And, and, and both of those companies did a good job. Uh, I think last was Soren Leach at the time. And uh, after that, it uh, uh, went to uh, Chris's dad, uh, Tim. And uh, they've really done an outstanding job. Uh, any notices are promptly responded to and uh, handled in a very uh, professional manner. I'd also say that uh, I was uh, in an adversarial possession, uh, uh, position with uh, uh, Chris uh, and uh, the company after his dad died uh, with another beneficiary of the estate. And uh, any companies that were that were uh, well known, believe me, were not interested in this contract at all. And uh, years ago, there was uh, an analysis uh, done, and that predates uh, you, Aaron, as to the uh, cost of the city doing it again in a damn close. Okay, but I guess well, Art, Art, the. the only one time is when you're, you're only supposed to get up one time. You just mentioned that at some point in time I let somebody talk for 15 minutes. You, you were, but I, I, I let that happen. And technically, by, by the rules, you, you, you can only go up once. But go ahead and say your piece. Sure. I didn't know. I probably voted every time that I could since I've been 21. So. Uh, gentleman that just spoke, and he is a prime gentleman. Uh, I was referring to the people that were here and voted tonight. I did not understand you voting. I'm glad that you did come up here. Was it the uh, gentleman, test replaced the gentleman who went back to Houston, that brought it up to Mayor Baker that you could not make any more than $5,000 with the city? And the next thing we knew, he was out of town. He ran tests, uh, not tests, but he ran the water, wastewater treatment before test. Was that the man? That was, no, that was Lauren Lee. Yeah, he, got, he said something about you could only have $5,000 worth of business being mayor for a year. And he was gone. He was gone. He didn't. He was back to Houston quicker than we knew he was gone. Okay, okay. Anybody else for public comment? Mayor, I just wanted to say. Uh, you know, in regards to this session where we have uh, public comment and we have it again on the agenda later, I don't think anybody on the council has any objections to having no. it twice. I no. mean, you know, you could, you've got the ability to say it before for agenda items and you've got the ability to criticize us afterwards. I don't think anybody in, in this council objects to that. I, yeah, and I, I believe they were going by what the Legislatives, uh, Illinois Municipal League has recommended, and it, again, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody has uh, any objections to putting it on twice. Yes, this is not the Illinois Municipal League. 
this is the city council approved, and this is the body of taxpayers, plus you're also taxpayers. Hey, we should have a voice. I'm well aware of that, and, and we're coming to the saying that, hey, we don't have a problem with it. We don't have a problem with it. Asking for it. Uh, Your Honor, I have a comment to make, too. I believe in following the rules also. And when we make a rule that you have three minutes, I wish it would be abided by. I wish we would stick to that rule and not just let it go helter-skelter. That's part of the problem. Someone here just mentioned that from the floor, that we need to follow the rules. And I agree with that. OK, anybody else that hasn't already talked? You've already talked twice. No, there, there. It says that you can only speak for a maximum of three minutes. So if you're going to make the official timekeeper, if I get up here once and I talk for 57 seconds and then I sit down and I come back up. So is the city approved you, you, you can't a timekeeper? Come, you, because according to your ordinance, and by the way, your ordinance also says you can't comment during my public comment. Um, so that I, I, I can tell you that you're being repetitive. So, no, I'm just mentioning because you incorrectly or somebody incorrectly said. Okay, that you need to wrap time. it up. You need to wrap it up. So, what's my time? You're already a minute and a half into your time. Because I'm watching the clock. Okay. So, you'll be official. So, now you're a minute and, okay. and 40 into your but time. I'm just letting you know that your ordinance doesn't say you can only speak Okay, thank you very much for that. Anybody else? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting adjourned.